waiting and waiting. Families, pets, possessions loading them down. All crossing to the Russian occupied territory south of Zaporizhia. This is what's slowing everything up here. The deep mud, cars just getting bogged down, sliding all over. This one just managing to get through. And the reason they're coming this way, quite simple. The bridges are blown up. Ukrainian emergency services doing their best to get people through the rain-sodden fields. We've had to drag a few trucks out today, the commander says, but it's drying out and getting easier. Known as the Green Corridor, it's where people cross to and from Russian-occupied territory. But something odd this day, the traffic almost entirely one way. Of an estimated 6,000 people stuck on the Russian side, only 76 crossed. Many, many hundreds went the other way. Where are you going? To Kherson. Uh, why? Because my parents live in Kherson. Is it dangerous because there are Russians controlling Kherson? I know, I know this. But I must to take uh, from parents from Kherson to my city, Odessa. Everyone leaving Ukrainian-controlled territory telling us a similar thing. They expect to come back, even if it appears they're not. I'm taking my mother to the other side, he says, and picking up my grandmother. When we ask why he is taking his young daughter, he shrugs. If they were going to live on the Russian side, no one willing to admit it. The route working so well this day, several trucks taking the chance to turn a profit. <laughs> this man, his van loaded with Pepsi and toilet paper, telling us he's taking it to market. The emergency services here say that on a normal day, they get traffic coming from the occupied, the Russian controlled side. Today, it's different. They understand that there'll be nobody, nobody else coming from the Russian side today. No one any wiser why the Russians are still blocking so many desperate to leave. Nick Robertson, CNN, Kamyinska, Ukraine.